Thank you. Would the town clerk please take attendance? Councillor Breton? Here. Councillor Forrest is unable to attend. Councillor Hurley? Here. Councillor Lukina is not here yet. Councillor Lesser? Here. Councillor Rell? Here. Councillor Spinella? Here. Deputy uh, Mayor Martino? Here. And Mayor Morandello? Here. Thank you. Thank you, Dolores. This evening we have the public hearing on the town budget. Um, I w before I call up the superintendent of schools, I would just like to thank Kathy Bagley, our interim town manager, our new town manager, Gary Evans, our finance director, Mike O'Neill, our town uh, department heads and division heads, the library board and library director, and the board of ed, and superintendent of schools for all their hard work to get us to the, this point. They've spent months creating um, budgets that provide for their con contingencies, and um, now it's our job over the next month to deliberate on that budget. We'll have workshop meetings, and we'll hear from uh, the different department heads, and then we'll deliberate and work to um, create a budget that we feel is fiscally responsible while continuing to provide services to our community. Um, so if we, if we can, we'll begin with uh, Mike Emmett. Welcome. Good evening, thank you everyone. Yes, sir. Will you make sure that's on and that we can hear you at home, you know, so the can viewers at home can hear you? Can we dim the lights, can we see you all right? Or do you want to turn the lights? You could, we can dim them a little. I think we should dim it a little bit. Is that better? Yeah, you should have green. Better? Yeah. I'm not getting anything on the mic. Test, test one, two. We got it. Perfect. Good evening, everyone. Very nice to be with you this evening. I'd uh, like to present you the Board of Education uh, budget for fiscal year 2019-2020. Um, as Mayor Bello stated, we have gone through uh, several months of kind of trials and tribulations and uh, very hard work on the part of our Board of Education, our administrative team, and our teachers to ensure that we have a budget that is both responsible and meets the needs of our students. Um, also, what you'll see this year is you'll actually see a decrease with the Board of Education budget as part of our commitment to the shared services model. Uh, last year, both the Town Council and the Board of Education were unanimous in their support for developing a shared services model in the area of operations and maintenance. And I am proud to say that we have been able to do that. And in my professional and personal opinion, I think we've done it quite well. So we are now currently uh, sharing services both on the IT side as well as operations and maintenance. So looking at the number, our approved 1819 budget was $58,728,469. Our proposed 2019-2020 budget is $57,159,339. This is a decrease of $1,569,130 a percentage decrease of 2.67% over the current operating budget. In terms of our summary by object, as has been the case uh, for many years, the bulk of our budget goes toward personal services in terms of benefits and salaries. We're at about 80, 81% for salaries and benefits. And in terms of our changes by major object, what you see here in terms of our personal services and benefits, we're seeing an increase of $599,150, a slight increase in property, $257,774. That encompasses our one initiative, and that is to continue our effort to be one-to-one -one with Chromebook technology across the entire district. Other purchase services, including tuition and property. Miscellaneous, we see a decrease of 5,931, and then professional technical services, personal services salaries, and purchase property services and supplies. All of those are related to custodial and maintenance, including all of our utilities, which will shift over to the town. In terms of our drivers, 
the bulk of our budget is, as I mentioned, is salaries and benefits. We have WFT contractual and step increases uh, totaling $764,871. We just settled our uh, contract with the WFT this year. We're projecting at this point in time retirement savings of $80,000 with the retirements that have um, been submitted already. Uh, it tends to happen over the course of the springtime where we may get anywhere between an additional one to three more retirements. In terms of retaining our 1819 WFT positions, we have a career coordinator that's been partially grant funded this year and partially funded through a long range maternity leave. And then also our STRIVE and ABA programs. These are in-house special education programs that we've developed by reallocating tuition dollars where students typically would go out of district. They're now in district and getting services right here in Wethersfield where they belong. We also have in a driver for the coaching stipends for lacrosse. Um, this is a process that was developed with our parents. It's a partnership that we've developed over the past two years where we're currently in club status. As of last week, we had 73 students, both boys and girls, um, participating in the club lacrosse program. That's enough for both a varsity and a JV team for both boys and girls. And then any other additional contractual and step increases for administrators totaling 204,084. I would note that with our administrative group this past year, our administrative group took a hard zero. In terms of personal services, benefits and drivers here, we have our contribution to OPEB. Want to uh, mention right now at this point in time, we're looking at a health insurance increase of 9%. We know that that has um, gone up slightly to 11%. You'll see that in the uh, town budget presentation. We see a 7.5% increase for workers' comp. And then again, the Board of Education has taken on the potential legislative mandate for the TRB contribution. We project next year to be $249,606. At this point in time, that increase is not guaranteed. We're waiting to see what the legislature is going to do. In terms of purchase professional and technical services, our drivers here, we are actually showing a reduction in professional development support, some certain trainings and anticipated homebound tutoring consultations. We do expect an increase in special ed consultation services. That may be services requested uh, through a PPT process where we're requesting a uh, an evaluation that we cannot provide in district. And then again, we see a shifting of custodial maintenance programs to the town. That's training. Here you see decreases. This is the custodial maintenance program shifting to the town, water and sewer, repairs and maintenance, construction services. And then we also have a decrease we're seeing with our Chromebooks. What we've done in the past is we've done a Chromebook lease and we're finding now with Chromebooks becoming much more economical, it's uh, more feasible financially to go with a purchase as opposed to a lease. And that reduction is one of our leases coming offline. Other drivers here, we have some contractual increases in uh, regard to transportation services. We have an increase in SPED and VOTEC transportation. Again, that's a mandate. Athletic transportation provided exclusively by the contractor. One of the things we did last year was we sold off our athletic buses. They were becoming uh, <coughs> very outdated and quite expensive to maintain. And then we see a slight increase for tuition for state-placed students in SPED magnet services, $36,050. Athletic supplies, this is uh, due to the addition of the lacrosse program. And then custodial maintenance program shifting to the town budget. Maintenance supplies, custodial supplies, natural gas, and electricity. And again, as I mentioned earlier, to maintain the one-to-one uh, -one Chromebook initiative, uh, our IT department is proposing the purchase of 1,441 Chromebooks to replace one expiring lease of 441 units with an additional 1,000 units to cycle inventory that is beyond useful life. Um, this became more important this year when we had a batch of uh, Dell units that uh, we struggled with battery life and with batteries overheating. So we've recalled 500 Dell units this year and taken them out of the hands of our kids because we didn't think that those batteries were safe. So we've pulled those. So this will become more important than ever before. 
and in terms of the budget driving our vision, this is directly from our strategic plan. This is what we're operating under. We have a six-year strategic plan that we implemented last year. And you'll notice our stakeholder core values. We're inclusive. We're committed to lifelong learning. We're using knowledge and skills beyond the walls of the classroom, and we're focused on personalized learning. Tomorrow, in the event that you haven't heard, we'll be hosting an appellate court session at Weathersfield High School in the auditorium where we're bringing the community into the building and giving our kids an opportunity to see what goes on out in the real world. We're very important, uh, importantly involved with our family partners. They're connected, they're collaborative, and they're constructive. Our BOE and community members are engaged. They mentor and they're resourceful. Our educators are innovative, they're tenacious, and they're catalysts for learning. And finally, the most important group, the students. They're curious, they're emotionally intelligent, they're independent, ultimately they're successful. So in terms of the timeline, this is where we've been. Uh, this is a condensed version of the presentation, obviously. We started on February 14th with the presentation before the board. The board uh, conducted two budget workshops, both on February 20th and March 11th. The board took action on the uh, Board of Ed budget on March 12th. Uh, it was approved and sent to the town council by March 15th. Uh, we did a budget presentation, Mrs. Granado and myself, before council on March 18th. We are here before you uh, this evening. And I know on April 29th, uh, the Board of Education will sit down with council and will um, continue to del uh, deliberate the budget, and then last but not least, the town council will notify Board of Ed of the budget allocation no later than May 15th. So with that, that's the Board of Education budget. Thank you, folks. Thank you, appreciate that thorough presentation. And now we'll have the town manager present the town budget. Projector one down. This isn't going to work well. Perfect. Of course, now I have to adjust this because you're that, that much taller than I am. <laughs> and just a lesson in performance. I probably should have put some pictures in of council members as we went. Got the oh extra gosh. bonus. Oh, 
All right. To the Honorable Mayor, Council Members, and Taxpayers of the Town of Wethersfield, per Section 703 of the Wethersfield Charter, I hereby present the 2019-2020 proposed budget for the Town of Wethersfield. This process began in early January with interim Town Manager Kathy Bagley and Director of Finance Michael O'Neill beginning the difficult task of meeting with department heads to review the current expenses, upcoming needs, and known barriers for each department. I want to take a moment, I know they're in the audience, to acknowledge the work they've accomplished to date and thank them for their continued assistance throughout the process. What I will present tonight provides a summary of the 2019-2020 financial needs for the efficient operation of town government. This presentation includes the town and the Board of Education proposed budget numbers, which when combined allowed us to propose a mill rate by the April 1st deadline. Over the next few months, the council will meet publicly with department heads, as the mayor had said, uh, meet with department heads, the superintendent of school, as well as myself to discuss these recommendations. So if we can begin, and is the slide working on that side? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. The slide that you see here reflects the increase in value gained over the last year. The grand list is made up of three components, real estate, personal property, and motor vehicle. Collectly, collectively, these components have increased by $70 million, which is this number right over there. In other words, the value of the property has gone up as measured by the revaluation completed last year. At the same time, and as you're going to see in the subsequent pages, expenses, most of which are out of our control, have also gone up. In order to cover the increase in expenses, we have three options. We can reduce expenses within our control, we can increase the mill rate, or we can do a combination of both. The challenge is that expenses would need to decrease by more than $2 million to adjust the mill rate by one. What I am recommending is a combination of both fiscal restraint and an increase of less than one mill to bring the new rate to 41.72. This will allow us to cover the increase in costs in order to maintain the same level of service and quality of life for the community. So what you have here is a general fund at 41.19, the road fund, which is per charter, of 0.53, and a total mill rate of 41.72, which represents an increase of about 2.31% over last year's. I included this slide to show the changes in our mill rate over the almost a decade. If you look at fiscal year 15, right around here, you see that that is the largest increase, that's the largest bump. This is due to bonding related to the high school. This really set the tone for the next three years. If you look, there's a couple little bumps up and then it, it sets a projection going forward. This next slide is an overview of both revenues and expenditures for the upcoming year. <clears throat> and I'm just gonna point to uh, the increase in our mill rate, which is driving this, which is about 5.36% down here. We're going to spend some time talking about that, but for now I want to focus on the revenue section first. So as previously mentioned, our new mill rate will allow us to absorb part of the increase in expenses. If you look at the chart, we've applied the mill rate to the grand list, those three components, the uh, real estate, personal property, and motor vehicle which generated a four and a half million dollar, a little bit more than four and a half million dollar increase in revenue. Uh, the intent of which is to cover the, the increase in expenditures. The governor's proposed budget also provides some fiscal relief for the taxpayers, which are these numbers right here, state aid, education, and state aid other. And if we look right here, oh, we got the wrong thing.
much better. All right. See, this is why I should always set up my own stuff. Sorry about that. Um, so if you look, over the last few years, the state hasn't always been there or been capable of providing us the relief. So if you look down here, in other years, we've seen actually a 14, more than a 14, almost a 15% decrease in assistance. That equates to a little bit over $1.5 million worth of a decrease. This governor's proposed budget seems to reverse that trend, at least for now. Um, and we see that as a positive thing. So the big question that everyone wants to, wants to ask is, how did we get to that 5.36% increase? And so in the interest of being transparent and to allow for the ability to compare expenditures of this year compared to last year, because we've had some changes, I'm presenting two operations, um, uh, town operations on two different lines. I'm breaking out the implementation of shared services for custodians and maintenance of schools on one line and then adding it back in in another. So if you look here, I have town operations, excluding the Board of Ed facilities, and another one for town operations with the Board of Ed facilities. So they're separated, however, the number at the bottom, which I'll get to, includes uh, the Board of Ed facilities. So when you, when you break it out, the town operations without the Board of Ed facilities, we saw an increase of a little bit more than 2%, which is really in line with the rate of inflation. When we add the custodial and maintenance expenditures back to the town operation side, and then add in the Board of Education budget, which is right over here, Board of Education budget, see their decrease, we have a total expenditure of 5.36%. So again, I want to spend some time on expenditures uh, to show what's driving the town operation costs upward. So if we separate the town and the Board of Education, we see that the 2 point set, well, I'm going to go back, this 2.3% right here, is going to be carried into this number up here. So we see that 2.3 operations increase from the previous slide, plus absorbing the cost of custodians and maintenance, is driving the general uh, government's cost of doing business up about 16% from last year. So last year, the adopted budget was $43 million. This year, we're proposing, proposing $50 million. The increase is a little over $7 million, which results in a 16% increase. When you combine the increase with the Board of Education's number, the proposed increase over last year, right, 107 million is 5.36%. This next sh slide shows the impact of the migration of the custodians uh, and maintenance costs on the budget. So we brought over 42 positions, all maintenance, utilities, and supplies that were previously under the Board of Ed. This resulted in a $5.3 million increase over last year. But keep in mind that the Board of Ed will show a reduction in this line item. So we haven't added any new programs, products, or services. We just change which budget the cost would, pay, would be paid from. So again, this chart shows a summary of the cost drivers on the town side to get to $7 million. As I just stated, so again, $50 million minus the 43 gives us $7 million of which 5.3 is coming from the Board of Education side, which leaves us other increases, which I'm going to separate in a moment, at about 1.7. That's how we get to the 7 million. This slide shows the drivers for this year's increase. So again, this is just the compacted slide from the previous page. What you're seeing are, as an example, the MDC and trash um, causing the biggest variation this year. MDC has gone up 6 point, almost 7%, and we've seen almost a 46% increase in trash disposal over last year. All municipalities within the MDC or using the trash facility are, are going to see these costs and they're gonna have to absorb these costs somewhere. We're not alone, um, and our neighbors are going to have the same issue. The next component that you see here are legacy costs, pension contribution, retiree uh, medical. Um, these are the result of contracts from the past, rising na nationwide medical costs, and keeping up with actuarial assumptions to adequately fund our pension system. Important to note, my comments should not be misconstrued as an attack on the talented retirees or existing staff covered under the pension program. The point is that the contracts of the past are not the same as the contracts we're negotiating today. Administration has taken great measures through negotiations to move from a pension program to a defined contribution program, and to also look at opportunities to reduce health reduce healthcare costs for all parties. 
management and the union should be acknowledged for their ongoing discussion to help stabilize the budget going forward. It's something that employees on both sides, both, both management and union, are really focusing on and have agreed to move forward as we negotiate contracts. Salaries and employee medical coverage. So this year there were a number of requests for increased staffing within departments, which I did not include in the budget. And as someone just coming on, on board, I wanted a chance to analyze the existing capacity of staff, what projects were currently in play, um, and to keep any of those department increases to a minimum, we're really trying to hold them down. Um, and from my initial review, I have to say that we, we are at critical levels in certain departments, um, yet these departments continue to be creative in finding efficient ways to still get things done. And ultimately, uh, the departments continue to do more with less or as my wife likes to correct me, more with fewer, I guess is the correct. There are increases to salary based on contractual obligations, and you can see that on the screen. Um, and medical coverage, as I mentioned before, is increasing uh, on a national level. And just a note, uh, because the superintendent did mention, mention it, we are forecasting right now, we, we are anticipating an 11% increase. We haven't gotten the final number. I'm hoping that it's closer to the 9%, but to be conservative, we're assuming on 11% until we hear otherwise. The next two items that you see up there are debt instruments, the first being approved by town voters last November, and the other one being a focus on public safety, a public safety need for the community. The remaining amount, which is showing up as a negative number, is everything else. It's all non-personnel related items in every other department. This is probably the best example I can give on how department heads, how your department heads, are holding the line on costs. You're actually seeing a reduction on items within their budget line items. The next three slides tie to the financial health and strength of the town. Actual projections places, place us at about 98% for the pension assets by 2035. You can see that here. And if I can just jump for a second, and about 50% for other post-employment benefits or OPEB, which is this number right here, we're at 50%. That's uh, the OPEB number, that's on track with expectations. OPEB was always something managed annually, um, but with rising costs for medical, the town had to develop a long-range plan to address it, and this is their plan, and they're sticking to it. Um, and, and speaking of plans, council has put a responsible plan in place um, we continue to operate based off of the plan, as challenging as that increase in costs may be and the need to absorb those costs. This is a responsible path to dealing with future liability, and I recommend the council remains on that path. Fund balance. Again, council adopted a policy in this case to have fund balance between 7 and 10% of the general fund expenditures. This snapshot here shows where we are currently and where we're expected to be. This is good fiscal management. This is a 400,000, this $400,000 right here is a conservative calculation that allows us to address any unforeseen or unanticipated reductions in funding that may come down the line. Uh, and the best example I can give or is the governor's budget changes after we've already approved our budget. We're gonna need to absorb that, that funding somewhere or if we have a massive series of events, um, environmental events, uh, that money needs to be absorbed somewhere, and that's usually that 400000 in there. So in that case, we take the unassigned fund balance, we subtract the $400,000 that we're putting into the budget, um, which leaves us with the remaining fund balance, and then we do the test, and in which case we're at a little over 10%, so we're within our policy guidelines. Again, this is just an example of a strong and conservative fiscal approach to management, and it's one that should be commended. Last slide. Uh, per the charter, we, are, we have a dedicated levy for roads. The proposed budget reflects council's continued dedication to that. So the current tax levy is a little bit shy of 1.2 million. We have some assistance from the state, a uh, slight reduction from previous years, but the assistance is still there, which gives us total revenues of 1.8 to equal our total expenditures of 1.8. So once again, this proposed budget is a conservative approach to addressing increased costs, of which we have limited control, while maintaining programs and services that provide for quality of life amenities to keep the town 
thriving and moving forward. Essentially, that concludes my presentation for tonight. I look forward to input from council and the public as we continue this process. Thank you, appreciate that. So tonight, members of the public, um, any person who desires to speak at the budget hearing shall initially be heard for no longer than 10 minutes. After all persons who desire to speak have been heard, those persons wishing to speak for a second time shall be allowed to do so, but shall not exceed 10 minutes. So if there's anybody in the audience who'd like to come up, please state your name and address and make sure you talk into the microphone. Um, who'd like to begin? Mr. Mazzarella, come on up. Good evening, Tom Mazzarella, 600 Walcott Hill Road. Nobody wants to speak tonight, just me? It's, well, you're first. Okay. So rather than recite a bunch of numbers, I just want to speak in concept, if you will. Uh, we listened to the Board of Ed uh, presentation and the town manager's presentation, <clears throat> and I quite frankly don't understand the sh shared services uh, items. Last year we switched the IT department over to shared services. I believe that only cost us about $10,000 or something along those lines. It, it went up slightly if I'm not mistaken. Tonight we're looking at uh, over $5 million in custodial costs, utilities, all the non-educational costs on the board side being transferred over to the town side Yet the board side didn't go down $5.3 million. It went down a couple million dollars. So we're not really not saving anything by having these so-called shared services. If you want to have consolidation of services, then you can share some, save some money. For example, if you have a, let's say, a plumber on the Board of Ed side and you have a plumber on the town side, now you combine the services, you eliminate one plumber and have one plumber take care of the whole town, then you're going to save some money. All you've done is transferred all the employees over to the town budget. You've actually given them a little bump so that they would go along with it. Uh, I believe you hired a supervisor to work under physical services to oversee the school maintenance side. So I don't see where you've saved any money at all. Um, this gave the Board of Ed an opportunity to increase what they were providing and they came back and said, look, we reduced the budget from last year. What a great job we did. They didn't reduce the budget. Uh, I think you ought to consider where Weathersfield is as a, as a community. We have about 11,000 households. 20% of the population are seniors. 5.3% are below the poverty level. The uh, ALICE program just came out and stated that 34% of the Weathersfield population is uh, defined as ALICE, uh, which is basically two people working in a household uh, full time and unable to make, meet their basic needs or right at basic needs. So Weathersfield is not doing that great as a whole. Um, quite a few years ago, I, I believe Weathersfield was more affluent. That's not the case now. There's a lot of people that are struggling. There are people that have never got their jobs back from uh, the last uh, big recession that we had. Uh, you have to keep these things in mind. Uh, everyone I talk to in uh, my age group, they're all looking to, to move elsewhere where it's less expensive. And a lot of those costs are controlled by the state where this council doesn't have a lot of uh, 
input on what happens there. But there are costs within our town that we can save money and reduce the impact of taxes uh, to the residents. Uh, a while back, we talked about the grand list. So we had a reevaluation, and we actually made out quite well. The grand list increased. I believe you got a little over $3 million in added income to the town. And had we just spent within our means, we could have preserved the mill rate at what it was, or even lowered it a little bit. And I think that's what you need to work on. You need to sharpen your pencils, get everybody in your rooms with your workshop meetings, and get down to the nitty gritty and find out where, where we can save some money. In the uh, manager's pr presentation text, they ask for citizens' input as to what can we do to uh, save, uh, reduce our spending, maybe reduce some services. And there was an example, I think it's been in there for several years, but they talked about leaf collection. And it said, uh, would you agree to have uh, leaf collection once a year instead of twice a year? Uh, so I go back to the, where are we going to save money by doing that? If we were to reduce the amount of leaf collection, are we going to retire some workers to save some salaries? Are we going to sell off some dump trucks and some leaf vacuums? I mean, where do you save money by doing that? Uh, quite a few years ago, uh, we eliminated picking up Christmas trees as a way to save money. <laughs> How did we save any money? Did we not pay any workers to go around and pick up the Christmas trees? Did they have other things to do? I don't know. I don't see where that, those kind of things save money. So you have, to, you have to really look close, each and every department, particularly the school system, because that's where the majority of the money is going. Um, I think it can be done. Uh, we saw a couple weeks ago a presentation by uh, Ms. Stoli on the Wethersfield school system performance. Wasn't that great, yet we spend a lot more money per student than other uh, communities. So just because you spend more money on education doesn't mean you get the results. So I think you should look at that. Thank you for your time. Thanks, Tom. Is there anybody else who'd like to speak tonight? Mr. Woodward. Good evening. My name is Bob Woodward. I live at 456 Middletown Avenue and have lived there for 41 years now. I was going to begin by congratulating the Board of Ed for lowering their budget. Um, it's the first time, I think, in my memory that that has happened. But I listened to Tom, and he's right. We put a, pulled a lot of money over into the town budget, gave the Board of Ed a chance to lower the budget, but still put things in there. Um, maybe some of that transfer over should be cut. I'm not sure, but it's a question worth pursuing. Usually the library has presentation, and all I can say is Wethersfield has a fine library, good staff, they're very welcoming. Um, I always support the library. But then I want to look at the town budget because I continue to be terrified, is the word I used two years ago, and I continue to be terrified by the mill rate. It's headed toward East Hartford, Torrington, New Britain, and Hartford. Where are we going to stop? Where are you going to realize how many people are under the poverty rate? Where are you going to realize how many of us are on fixed income? Where are you going to stop and come back under 40 mills? You probably had a chance to do it this year but you didn't. I hope and pray that you will. The main thing I want to say, though, is my question to myself is, am I going to pay the increase or am I going to pay this town any taxes this year? Because this town has failed our neighborhood on Middletown Avenue in two ways. Middletown Avenue at Maple Street had two houses there, and Historic District Commission let those houses be demolished despite protests. We turned out in force, and I mean in force, 
to planning and zoning, sat here till after 11 o'clock one night, and planning and zoning allowed the zoning to be changed from residential to business, promising us that they could control what happened. I hope they will, because it feels like that neighborhood is being violated and we're gonna look at commercial creep coming down a long time residential neighborhood. That's not a pleasant place. The luxury apartments going up around the corner on Silas Dean have a nice tax rebate. That's a nice slap in the face to our neighborhood because the south end of our neighborhood, we have lived through nightmare on Middletown Avenue for what is it, two years now I've lost count thanks to MDC. There are some good things I can say about them but also a lot of not so good experiences. We learned as a neighborhood to band together to take care of ourselves. There wasn't a lot of support that came forth from the town. The street, part of the street where I live is wider than normal because there are barriers there. Part of the, part of the property is missing. Public works came down and plowed the center of the street, leaving me at 71 years old with a whole extra lane of snow to shovel. Thankfully, MDC did it one time, and my own plow person did it the rest of the time. But I watched one day when this big piece of equipment from the town came down. Never tried to come over and take a little more snow away. I pay taxes. I didn't feel good about that at all toward the town. We really needed some town support out there. If you had come around and looked and seen how much town property MDC utilized to store equipment, supplies, vehicles, you might have charged them good rent or at least negotiated the MDC rate down. And I'm going to say what I said, said a few months ago here. Don't pay MDC the increase. Go looking for a new company. There are new companies. The town manager knows that New Britain is not part of MDC. Go look at some new options on trash pickup if that's getting too high. Don't just keep the same thing. That's what we would do as homeowners. You owe us that as taxpayers. I hope you also increase the tax rebate for that luxury apartment building that's going up around the corner from us. If they have high-priced tenants, they can afford to pay the rent without a tax rebate. Please remember, we're hardworking citizens, or we were those of us who were retired. We take care of our money. If I pace for something, I expect to get something back. And I think our neighborhood deserved a lot more than we got back from this town this year. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Is there anybody else who'd like to speak tonight? Come on up, Mr. Young. Good evening, Robert Young, 20 Copper Mill Road. I took a look at your budget online, and I read through it, not, not all the detailed portions, but at least a lot of the narrated. And then I pulled out my proposed budget book from last year, expecting when I walked in here tonight, I would get one of these from the table. Instead, and this is what we've had in other years. Obviously, it's not important enough to share all that detail with us citizens, except for those slides and whatnot that are put online. And of course, I wasn't going to print out on my printer the entire or any of that budget. And I expected to come down here and get a copy of it so I could follow along with it and pull some numbers that I didn't write down. So I think I heard the word tonight about transparency, and I, you know what I've said about transparency in this town. It doesn't exist. 
it's pretty poor what we do have. And I think transparency would have been to provide a book for every citizen who came here tonight. But I guess we're not that important. Anyway, you know, Tom, Tom brought up a good subject too about the, the Board of Education. The, seven, the $5 million savings. And yet, they're only reducing their budget by one and a half million. You've got to bring that back to some kind of an equilibrium. If they saved, or if they were moving five, five million, five million three hundred thousand dollars over, they should have had that three million five hundred thousand dollar, three hundred thousand dollar reduction, not one point five million dollar reduction. You need to cut that and bring that into what we call equilibrium. Take it from there and put it over there. And you've got to balance the books. Maybe you don't know how to do that. But ask your accountant. He knows how. In any case, looking, looking at the budgets, uh, you have to now look at the whole budget because you've got this shifting going on. 5.36% 5. 5. increase is horrendous. And you folks keep doing this year after year. Yet, it doesn't sink in that the citizens out here have a heck of an investment in this town, and you folks are, are killing our investments. You know, I went back to the old book of last year, and I followed, sort of like said, what happened last year and what's happening this year. And, and one of the things I looked at was last year, the average home in Weathersfield sold for $255,000. I'm rounding it off. But that was in 2016. 2017, the price of an average home that sold was $247,000. We took a heck of a drop last year. I think it was $8,400 per house. And, a, and those that sold, that much of a drop we took. This year we went up, and, and it was only by memory, I believe it was something like 249,000. So we went up approximately $2,000 on an average house that sold. Not much for the big investment that we have been putting into this town. And just wait. Right now the market isn't doing well again. And you wait once the tolls are put on that end of Weathersfield by, what's his name? Lion Ned. He's going to put a toll up there and a toll down here in Rocky, right on the Rocky Hill line of Weathersfield. And when people go somewhere, it's going to be toll booths, whack, 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 all the way. And you know what that's going to do to the price of the homes in this town? It's going to drive them down. You know, the who, you know who's going to make out? those people on the, the west side of Harford and going out where there are no toll booths or gantries or whatever you want to call them. But that is, that is setting the scene right now. And people aren't going to buy in this corridor at all. And those who sell are going to be damn lucky to sell. But anyway, I'm looking at the different... The different and, how many homes sold, how many homes, the dollar amounts, and you haven't done a darn thing. You have, you've improved by $2,000 per house. That's not much. We lost 8000 a year before. I also notice in here you've increased your uh, uh, road improvement fund from $1.5 million to $1.8 million. I've often said how you people negotiate. I can see why we're doing this. It's poor management all around. You don't know how to manage and you don't know how to negotiate with your, with your vendors. And this is why you have to now put more to maybe get the same amount of road done, which gives us a very high inflation rate if you really look at it. And of course your mill rate, your, your grand list didn't go up. If we remember, Mr. Mr. Forrest was talking about the grand list was going to save us from going to $40 a, $40 a mill rate. And where are we? I forget where we are. 41? 
with your budget. You've got to bring your, your if you went up 70 million or whatever on, on, your, on your grand list, our dollars should have come down. The mill rate, and it's not happening here. You're still up, you're higher than what we are in this current year. And you, this is a big mistake. This is poor management again. Talk about expenditures. Look at all year long, all the things that you people bought. You bought on, did you pay cash for it? No, oh, a great deal of the things you paid on credit. Leases, they call them. And those leases, as I said, are going to come back and bite you at, at a certain point. When interest rates start going up, you're going to say, oh, I can't do those inter the leases anymore because interest rates are going too high. But then you still need to buy. That means you're going to be making payments both ways, on the new buys as well as you have to clean up your leases, unless you're going to bankrupt them, which I wouldn't have any problem doing. And then, of course, look, you have lacrosse. <laughs> $24,000, nothing to it, it's so small, but guess what? All those little dollars add up. A few years ago, Mr. Montaneri, mayor, gave a bunch of money to the lacrosse people. This money here was to help the lacrosse people. Why are we constantly doing this, madam? I mean, you, you, you complain that the price is, the cost is going up to run the town, yet you're the ones who are initiating the cost going up. You're accepting every, all of this nonsense. And yes, Chromebooks. We have to buy them on credit, and I think the, man, the uh, superintendent said that the, it's better now to buy in whole. You only bought these on credit last year. You mean to tell me it's now or it's coming to realization? What goes on with you people? You're supposed to be smart. So they say. I haven't seen it yet. But I'll tell you what. You are driving us down the hole. I think, Mr. Manager, you should go back and look at those numbers from the Board of Education. And like Tom said, and like I said, there's got to be an equilibrium. They, 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 they lost headcount. They lost dollars. And it moved over here. You should see that reflected in their reduction this year. I don't see it. How are you going to fix it now? Are you going to fix it? You know, here you go. You're buying a farm today. You went out, on, you, went out you talked about transparency, Mr. Uh, Manager, a little while ago. There is no transparency. Have we ever seen the appraisal for that farm that they're buying over there on, uh, what's it called? Highcrest and or High, Highland and Collier? Not at all. You folks, all nine of you decided you're not going to show it to the public. You're just going to tell the public they're going to have to go and vote without a, the, without a look at the, at the appraisal that the town bought. Oh, wait a minute. There was an appraisal. It was the seller's appraisal that you gave me. But you didn't give me your appraisal. That is a low-life person who does something like that. And every one of you are that in that position of being low-life. And then you stand here, sit here, and talk about, we have expenses, and you people have to pay it. Okay, your time is up, Mr. Yeah, that's, my time is always up. I remember that happened at one other meeting, madam, that you were not even running, right? Thank you very much. Is there anybody else who'd like to speak? Mr. Colantonio? Good evening. I'm going to be nice and easy, guys, you know. Uh, you know, 5.36%, I think it's a lot. Name and address first. Oh, I'm sorry. Gus Colantonio, 16 Morrison Avenue. Since 1973, February, I think it was tanked. <laughs> yeah, 1973. It's about 46 years now. That's that's how long I've I've been paying taxes in this town. It's getting to be too long. Well, 5.36 percent. It's uh, it seems to me very high. Uh, I've been out of work for 11 years now, and. Uh, 
And I see a lot of signs as I go around in Wethersfield, for sale, for sale. It seems that, you know, property is worth more, but the, the mill rate goes up. Doesn't make too much sense. When we got uh, the revaluation a few years ago and the revaluation went so far up, the mill rate went down. You know, a lot of times when I talk with my friends, says, you know, the mill rate, you know, I tell them it doesn't mean anything at all. Basically, the town chooses to spend or whatever they need, and then based on that, the evaluation of the property, and they uh, assess the taxes. That's the bottom line. So, But when you stop and think that we are one of the worst states in the union for property taxes, for taxes alone, people are moving out of this town or this state, don't you ever wonder and ask yourself why? I mean, you know, how can it be? I got a car, you know, I got, I pay more, more uh, taxes this year than the year before because of, of the new regulations, I guess. You can only take X amount of, uh, I guess, uh, property taxes on your income tax. You know, that's, uh, that's crazy. But where are we going to go? You know, and I mean, Mr. Emmett, all the respect to you, but when you say that your budget went down 2.5% or 2%, whatever it is. I, I don't think that's correct. Because if you're going to compare from what it went down from last year to this year, you should remove the cost of that particular item that you had last year out of the budget and then see it if your budget went up or down. And I think it went up. Hey, the more item you remove, <laughs> the better you look. But the money that we spend in this town, it's, it's getting out of hand. You know, if 5% a year, it takes only like, you know, 10 years and everything doubles up. <laughs> My social security is not going to be double up. And, and believe me, you know, I still want to be here in 10 years. But where am I going to get the money to pay the taxes? You know, it's, uh, it's tough. But anyway, thank you for your time. Thanks, Gus. Anybody else like to speak tonight? Come on up, Martha. Hi, I'm Martha Keneally. I live at 12 Fairmont Street, and I am the vice chair of the library board. Uh, I'm here on my behalf and on behalf of our chair, Doreen Sarcia, who's unable to be here this evening in support of the library budget. Um, I want to start by thanking the community of Wethersfield for your ongoing support of our library. Time and time again, the people of Wethersfield have shown that they value the vital role our library plays within our community. Uh, Weathersfield Library is a highly relevant and engaging community hub that promotes lifelong learning and literacy and brings people and ideas together. The Library Board is proud that we have given unanimous bipartisan support to a fiscally responsible budget that maintains level services that impact every member of our community. Um, the approximately, uh, approximately $40,000 increase we're requesting tonight is solely related to personnel costs, such as health care, that are outside of the control of the library board. Um, our proposal um, is the result of a tireless effort by our library director, Brooke Berry, and her staff to deliver the best services to Wethersfield residents while meticulously monitoring the costs that are within our control. The Weathersfield Library's mission is to provide a welcoming community gathering place with free and open access to resources and experiences that engage the imagination, inspire learning, and promote the exchange of ideas. Our budget priorities are guided by our goals to satisfy curiosity and stimulate the imagination, support young learners and their families, celebrate diversity, visit a comfortable place, and support the efforts of our community members to be informed citizens. One of the key ways we achieve goals such as satisfying curiosity or supporting young learners is through our online presence, um, something that is supported in our budget this evening, um, but we really dug deep to make sure that we could maintain the services um, that we have. The only town department um, with longer hours of operation than the library is the police and fire departments. Um, even when the library building is physically closed, technology keeps us open for business. 
After we close our doors at night and before we open in the morning, patrons are able to sit outside of our building and use their library card to sign into our Wi-Fi. And at any hour of the day, you can access our collection from the comfort of your own home by using your library card to connect with online resources. Um, these online resources are instrumental in supporting the Weathersfield community in their endeavor to foster lifelong learning, creativity, and personal enrichment. Um, if you come to the library, you can learn, use online resources such as Ancestry.com, but from your home and when you're out in the community, you can use your personal device and by accessing um, our website with your library card for such resources as Hoopla, um, which allows you to download books, music, and movies onto your device or um, to access Consumer Report to find out information about products that you're buying. Um, this can all be accessed 24 hours a day and all by just the use of your library card. If you have not had the opportunity to stop by the library recently, we also encourage you to do that. Um, Brooke and our staff have been working very hard to make sure we're providing a welcoming environment for all. Our busy library includes spaces for collaboration, research, and of course, quiet reading. Thanks to the support of our friend, the friends of the Weathersfield Library who do so much to promote programs within our library and help to defer um, the cost of so many important services that we provide. Um, you can come and see a beautiful photographic installation on the main for floor of our library that celebrates the beauty of our community. And our libraries are all, librarians are always hard at work to provide a wide range of programs for all ages that inform, inspire, in, uh, entertain and stimulate the imagination. If you're interested in something that you aren't seeing in the library or want to have in our, on the schedule, please let us know. Our librarians are always interested in public input on resources and programs. In closing, as we ask for the funding that we need to maintain our staff, services, and hours, I also want to assure the council and the public that the library will continue to be very responsible stewards when it comes to taxpayer dollars. The library's budget is a fraction of the size of the town and the school budget, and we watch every penny of it, and we, will, we, we of course, promise to continue to do that. Again, I urge you to support the library budget as presented. Thanks very much. Thank you, Martha. Is there anybody else who'd like to speak tonight? George, come on up. George Kelly, 56 Pickering Lane. Uh, like Martha, I am on the board of the, uh, of the library and I'm here to speak in favor of the <coughs> library budget. Uh, Martha really laid out all the important points. Uh, it's a budget that we were, ha ha have gone through with Brooke and the staff very carefully. I think it, uh, uh, it does provide or call for the, the least possible uh, increase. Uh, but but as, apart from the specifics, I, I just hope people understand the role of the library today. It's, uh, there's a lot of talk about uh, the importance of our physical infrastructure, uh, but you're starting to hear a lot more about the importance of a social infrastructure. And that's something that the library really uh, provides for the town of Weathersfield, and, and we hope to keep doing that. Uh, finally, I guess, uh, we get uh, periodic visits from our two sets of grandkids, and as you probably know, six and eight-year-olds are pretty savvy consumers and connoisseurs of uh, entertainment, education, socializing in general, and <clears throat> when they come to visit, there are two places they want to go. One is the Science Center in Hartford, and the other is the Weathersfield Library. Uh, I think that says uh, a lot for what Brooke and the library staff ha have been doing. Thanks. Thanks, George. Is there anybody else who'd like to speak tonight? Is there anybody else who'd like to speak tonight? We'll do last call for first-time speakers. No first-time speakers? Okay, we'll move into second round speakers. Mr. Mazzarella? Tom Mazzarella, 600 Walcott Hill Road. I uh, left a couple of little items out of my dissertation. Uh, 
Um, in the town manager's process summary, down on the last page, he refers to the town budget as being much like your home business or vehicle. Money must be spent on these things each year so that they stay well maintained and do not cost more in the future because of lack of repairs in the present. I, I am a strong believer that the town budget should be dealt with just the way we deal with our homes. We only buy things when we can afford them. Uh, we have to make decisions every day as to what we want to buy, whether we can afford it. Uh, what we see here in the town happening, it appears similar to a young family just starting out. They don't really know how to manage their budget and they decide that it's easy to put it on a credit card and, and uh, buy what they want regardless of whether they can afford it because they look at these small monthly payments to uh, be able to buy a new car or a new dump truck or whatever it might be. Um, the budget process should be the same as, as a homeowner, as a small business, even as a large business. Um, but in this case, it's a little bit reversed because you just decide what we want to buy or what it's going to cost to uh, run the town in the manner that you choose. And when we come up with a shortfall, we just uh, adjust the mill rate and distribute that excess amongst the 26,000 residents, 11,000 households. Um, we also, we tend not to talk about the businesses in town. There are significant businesses in town that are impacted by an increase in the mill rate. Some of these, you know, if you look at the grand list, the top five, you know, there's, there's some businesses that have a substantial portion of the grand list. And uh, you raise their mill rate by one and it has a big effect. And some of those businesses don't have the uh, luxury of moving out. But it does affect the people moving in when we have an empty building on the Silestine Highway that we're trying to lease. A business coming in there has to look at that and, and decide, are they going to be able to handle the property taxes? When they may be able to go 15 miles away or 10 miles away, which is not that far in today's scheme of things, you hop in the car and you're there in a couple minutes, and, and they might be able to operate their business just as successfully um, and attract the same volume of people and pay a lot less in property tax. So something to consider. The other comment I wanted to make about the, uh, this summary is what we refer to in the budget discussions as contractual obligations and fixed costs and things that we can't do anything about. I want to remind everybody that those contracts are approved by the town council and by the Board of Education. So we hear presentations. We've come to an agreement with a various union, and we're pleased to say that it's 2% this year, 1.5%, 1.5%. Then you look down into the meat of the whole thing in the Board of Education side, and you look at a uh, schedule consisting of uh, memory loss. Um, each, each year the, the uh, rates increase. Then you have, a, you have an annual increase that's voted on by you contractually, 2%, 1.5%, 1.5%. But each step, that was the word I was trying to get, each step may be more significant than those 1.5%, 2%. And then you have what they call lanes. So if you get your master's degree, now you're in a different row with a different series of steps or increases. So some of those people that are working there, they might get significantly more than a 2% raise in one year. They may get five, six, seven, eight. I, I looked at some of them. It's up there. Something to consider. 
The town manager also describes debt and interest payments which have been approved by the voters. Well, some of them are. The Keisha Farm one was, and it was approved by the voters, not in any way a mandate. About a little more than half voted for it, a little less than half voted against it. <clears throat> a lot of these other items have not been approved by the voters. We just sit here and we have to figure out a way to make our budgets work because your budget didn't work. And lastly, I just want to remind you of this org chart that was in the budget proposal. And at the top, the top is the voters. That's us. Everybody else works for us. They report to us. We pay the salaries of all the employees in town, all the managers and department heads, Board of Education, and so forth. So you should be listening to us more. It's hard to get a lot of people to come out here and speak. People don't like speaking. I don't like speaking. I'm not very good at it. But <clears throat> You have to just look around, talk to people, and find out. People are hurting, and they don't like to come down here and air their dirty laundry and say, you know, I'm, I'm having trouble uh, buying groceries. I'm not going to come down here and say that. Who's going to be humiliated like that? But that's the fact. That's the reality. You saw it in that Alice report. 34%. I had no idea it was that high. There's 5.3% of poverty level in town. Look at the usage of the food bank. There's a lot of people that just cannot afford to increase their uh, taxes and the cost of living in general that you don't have much control over at all. But the thing you do have control over is those property taxes. Thank you very much. Thanks, Tom. Is there anybody else? Mr. Colantonio? Gus Colantonio, again, 16 Morrison Avenue. And I want to echo what uh, Tom just said, you know. Uh, you know, I don't mind government employees. I don't mind them at all. I mean, I, I think uh, not all of them, but uh, quite, a, quite a few of them do a lot of work, beautiful work. And they always say, we are the service of the people, you know. Yeah, we, they are the service of the people, but they make more than the masters. That's what bothers me a lot. You take a comparing job between private and in government, the government always pays more with less accountability, and you guys have to ask why. We brought it up, contractual, contraction all the time. I asked before, and I'm going to ask it again. The unions, well, before I ask that, the unions made this country what it is now, beautiful, and uh, make, uh, I, you know, the, the wages and everything else, it, it made it the greatness. Now the unions are ruining this country because they demand more and more, and yet <laughs> the work that the union people do, it's less and less. But the reason I came up here again, you know, the second time, I forgot about the, the, the library. You know, $40,000 in one year, I think it's pretty good. And I have to agree that the library, it's the best place in town. I mean, I don't really use it right now, spring and summertime, forget it, but you know, in the winter time, I'm there a couple times uh, a week, and, I, and it's, it's, it's the best place. And even though I have uh, access to a computer, I can research whatever I want, I really enjoy going to the library. I had, uh, not the climate, but you know, the people that work there, when, when I go there, I, uh, it makes my day. So you know, I go along with the budget and whatnot. I think they deserve it. Thank you. Thanks, Gus. Bob? Tom, you're a good leadoff hitter. The Red Sox could use you. Absolutely. <coughs> Tom reminded me something I wanted to add. I, I drive along Silestine enough or walk out there some, and I am deeply concerned about the growing number of empty storefronts. Rite Aid's gone. A store across from that is gone. I think there's two down in the plaza. There's three up in the old, what was the Kmart plaza. Uh, the nursing home up on Jordan Lane looks like a haunted house at night. 
if these, I realize somebody somewhere is paying some kind of tax on these, even unoccupied. But if these were occupied and thriving, I think we'd be paying more tax and maybe, <coughs> as Tom said, a lower mill rate would help get them, would help get them uh, sold or transition to a new business. The other thing, remember, a year ago, the federal tax code changed and it went into effect for this year. There is a cap on state and local taxes. If you continue to put the local tax up, it's harder to deduct the state tax. If you can drop the local tax, it helps everyone in this town. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Anybody else who'd like to speak? Mr. Young? Robert Young, 20 Copper Mill Road. As I had mentioned earlier, um, I, I expected to get a budget book when I came here tonight. But in reading online, I, I found a number of statements in here that were online as well as in here. It's not like this is a brand new book. This is like a, a reprint of last year's. And it's like, you know, in the area of long-term financial considerations for retiree benefits, it, it says, it is clear that without a new source of revenue, uh, the property tax will have to be continually increased to pay for these obligations. And then in another section it says, same thing. Without a new source of revenue, it can be expected that the property tax will have to be continued uh, to increase to meet the retirement obligations. And it goes on. I mean, this book is like plagiarized year after year. And of course, within it, we have a lot of great information. And you know, you, you have this statement in here that uh, somebody else read it also, or I think they read it. We want, need, and welcome your input into the budget process and how your tax dollars are being spent. I mean, this was last year. This was the year before. The year after that. And look, our taxes just keep going up, up, and up. Our spending, there's no end to our spending. It just continues. And I've made many suggestions on how to reduce your costs. And not one thing have you taken on. Maybe you don't have the backbone. Maybe that's what it's all about. You know, last year I spoke, and the year before, and the year before that, I spoke about this thing called the elderly circuit breaker. I think you should discontinue that. I also spoke about the renter's rebate. I think you should discontinue that. Now, a little caveat. Last year's edition said, as a result, the town is now mandated to provide approximately $350,000 for these two programs, that's the circuit breaker and the renter's rebate, uh, than previously has been, uh, for because previously it had been the responsibility of the state of Connecticut. So the state of Connecticut backed out of providing the money. I believe it got to a point where the town had to pay half of the money and the state was paying the other half. And then the state finally said, we're not paying any more, but you people have to continue doing that. Well, I would tell, madam, I would tell, um, what's his name, Ned, Lion Ned, to pork it. Let him worry about it. You want to have suggestions? I can give you suggestions, and I'll keep giving you suggestions. I've given you so many suggestions, and not one have you ever taken, taken and, 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 and implemented. But again, your book. I think you should have given us a new book. And then tonight you give us this slim little stuff. And of course we talk about the loans, the leases. You know, while I got the time, you know, we may as well talk about the loans and the leases. <clears throat> like we do about property, the Keisha Farm, $75,000 an acre that you're gonna pay for that. 
when in fact, land in Glastonbury, Rocky Hill, all over creation is only fifteen and $20,000 an acre. Yeah, you can find some primos that are higher, but general land, raw land, we're paying three times the amount of money that we should be paying for that property. And this, these people right here are the ones who okayed it. They put it out there. They negotiated it. Not only did they negotiate it, they had an appraisal done and wouldn't even give it to us. They held it back from, the, from all the citizens, not just me, all of them. Maybe a few got it. I don't know. A few friends and buddies. But anyway, here we go. We have a town radio system that we're still paying on. Seems like well, there's never an end to that system. Uh, we're, we're paying for some 10-yard plow truck. It's a, three, it's a 550 dump, uh, dump truck of some kind. A freight liner plow truck. These are all on leases. We have a, a, a fire engine. We have police cruisers that we buy and SUVs. I go out here in the parking lot and I see these, these, these little trucks and whatnot hanging around out here in the parking lot and, I, and they got Town of Weathersfield on them. They're in here, they're all leased. We got some kind of a three year, fiscal year 16, three year equipment lease, whatever that is. You got another one for fiscal 16, five year equipment lease. We got a, two, a, a fiscal year 17 dump truck. We got a fiscal year 17 payloader. We have police interceptors. We have turf replacement. We have rolling stock. We have two more fire engines coming, all on leases. And as those leases need to be paid, where is our tax bills going? along with our regular contractual rates that you have negotiated for salaries and benefits. Those are going to be going up. And when the toll booth gantry is put down here by um, Executive Square, and the other one is put up over here on, by Brainerd Road, you're going to see our all along, you're going to see our properties going this way because nobody's going to want to pay the toll. And nobody's going to want to live near those things because they know every time they go out on the highway, it, get out your credit card, it's going to be charged again, you know? And it's never going to end, folks. Talk about 40 mills, 40, 40 uh, what do they call it? Mills of $40 or a mill rate, whatever, however you pronounce that. We're going to be up to 50 in three years. And who's gonna, who, who, who are we going to blame for that? The citizens. Those citizens. They're the ones who caused the rates to go up. They should pay for it. Not you people. You're the ones that vote on all this stuff. You know, I, um, I don't know. It's pretty disgusting. They call it our government. This is somebody else's government, as far as I'm concerned. My government wouldn't do this. My government would be economical. My government would have saved money and wouldn't, wouldn't have made all those damn purchases that you people have and put us on the hook. Your government. I don't like your government, folks. Never have because there's no end to what you're going to take out of our pockets. It seemed like Ned, lying Ned, is going to take a lot out of our pockets. And, and it's not directly at the toll booth. He's going to be taking it in value of our properties. The, far, the properties over in Farmington are going to be well protected because they were not going to have any toll booths. But here in this corridor, we're going to get hammered. And we need to plan for that. But of course, that's like talking to that clock. We need to plan for it. I've been talking about planning for years here, and there's not a, no planning except for the your kind of government planning that has taxes going up, 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 and up, and there's no end to it. You're the fault. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. I don't expect much from you. 
because I don't think you have the backbone to cut the Board of Education and bring them into shape. And I don't think you have the backbone to take the town and bring that into shape either. Thank you. Is there anybody else who'd like to speak tonight? Anybody else who'd like to speak? Mr. Rue? Oh, <laughs> George A. Rue, 956 Cloverdale Circle. I was glad when you started up. I sent my name and address last time I forgot. I, I'm glad you mentioned that uh, for the meetings that you could have 20 minutes once and 20 minutes twice. I was afraid that that had been cut out of the charter. I think the third speaking opportunity was removed. Ten, but anyway. 10 minutes each Yeah, time. Why, whatever. It's a big improvement. <laughs> it's a big improvement. Uh, in any event, uh, I have spoken many, many, I've hardly missed any council, uh, any board meetings, uh, you know, budget meetings. But as I've gotten older, I've taken a little less interest, okay? Not that I don't worry about the spending. I do it to a degree. Uh, a couple of things that what I would expect, based on my own life experience as, as a manager of in, in, in the business areas, of controlling and, and, and uh, reducing operational costs on all kinds of things, be it manufacturing, be it office operations, and the like. The council that I would provide would be that I would hope that all of you can really look at our entire operations objectively, really objectively. Look for idle time, look for overtime, and I know there's a lot of that around. I see it all over town from time to time. And, and look at personnel utilization. Look at how our personnel are being used. If you're walking around town and you see people not pr being productive and sitting around and maybe just chatting, it should raise a red flag in your mind and say, hey, maybe we have an opportunity to combine a job or to eliminate a job. And I'm not much of an, I don't want to advocate laying a lot of people off. I've only got one person I'd like to lay off in this country, but that's, well, that, that's going to have to wait a while. <laughs> but uh, the, uh, the uh, things that, another thing is, as you look at programs that are being presented to you, you want to make sure, I hear again and again how these services are available to all of the town, and they truly are. The library is available to all of the town. I use it occasionally. I've got more books in my house than I know what to do with, and I've been trying to bring them down to the library and get rid of them, but, so, but that's, that's a different problem. But you want to look at who the customers are. In other words, if you're looking at a program that sounds good, it, it's a little incorrect to say the town benefits. When you want to put well, it came to my mind, and I commented on it last time. When you do Facebook, I don't know whether Facebook is free, but it ain't doing me any good. And I'll tell you, there's a lot of people my age. There's nobody here my age, <laughs> and uh, who 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 can't utilize these services. And you have to question in your own mind: Are these really services that are essential in the light of things that have been stated here tonight? People in the town, people in the country are struggling. So you want to make sure that the audience, that the, the services that you want to provide are really being used by everyone. Uh, I, have, I have some personal concerns periodically about uh, in, in the recreation area. Recreation is fine. I want, I've got my hands full with my own recreation problem. He's this little guy. He's eight years old now. He keeps me busier than a cat on a hot tin roof. But the, you want to make sure that the community at large will benefit from the things that you do and not some small segment of, of the community. And I'm not too sure that we in government, and that includes me and includes the people here, but they are all in government that we, we look at those aspects as carefully as perhaps we should. Uh, obvious things I noticed also, a lot of empty stores in town. And one of the things I notice when we have presentations by the economic development person, we always seem to hear about the stores that are opening, opening, opening. We never hear about the stores that are going away. And I drive this highway a lot, and I 
commented to, to my family, my wife and my son, the number of empty facilities and stores that I see on the highway. It's an area of concern. I don't, I don't know what the answer is, but it is an area of significant concern. I got a letter from the uh, tax department recently, and uh, it said my assessed value on my house went down. So I said, oh, gee, how'd that work? <laughs> it, it went down a couple of thousand dollars. And I've been carrying, on my, uh, uh, carrying it in my net worth as a potential sales price. So I called the tax office and said, hey, the sales price is point, you know, the, the assessed value divided by 0.7. She said, yeah, that's about right. So anyway, my house value went down a little bit. Do I worry about it? No, because I'll probably be moving out of this town in a couple of years. I've got this property down in all Wethersfield where I'm going. See, you're going to stay in town. Yeah, yeah there's only so I'm going to stay in town. <laughs> <laughs> I tried that one the other time. I told them I was moving. People wanted to know where to. So it's behind the, kind, behind the church down in town. So in any event. But these are the kinds of things that, that I think, as, as you deal with local issues, that you have to kind of think about and say, hey, is there, what, what's possible? How can we do this? And for this citizen, I'll be honest with you, I don't worry too doggone much about what's happening here. That ain't my worry in life. My worry in life is Washington these days. And boy, you want to worry, when you get to be my age and you see what's happening there, you damn well better start worrying. With that, thank you. Thanks, George. Is there anybody else who'd like to speak tonight? Anybody else who'd like to speak tonight? I'd like to thank the Board of Ed staff and town staff for coming out tonight um, and listening to residents and hearing their concerns. Uh, and next, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. I move we adjourn the budget workshop to April 22nd at 6.30 p.m. in the fireside room of the Pitkin Community Center. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Thank you and good night.